Here we are back again on the Cosmere train and the Cosmere mustache, as you can see, not, not a guy who can grow great facial hair. I wanted to grow this out while I read Stormlight. It's going poorly, uh, to say the least. But I will say uh, the reading of Stormlight is going much better. Watch my last review, which was Warbreaker. I was getting ready to read Words of Radiance, and the expectations are high, right? The expectations are high because Stormlight has a lot of hype, and if you watch my review of Way of Kings, you know that I loved that book. I thought it was one of the best first entries for an epic fantasy uh, I've ever read. With that said, I think Words of Radiance shattered those expectations and exceeded them beyond my imagination and it's it's weird because you review a book and I thought Wave Kings was like a four four or five maybe maybe a five out of five right but it it's hard to rate books like that because then you read the next entry in the series and it just expands on it and makes it so much better it makes it really hard to judge a book but I think Words of Radiance is one of the best books I have read all year and I, I want to talk about it so in my Way of King review, I thought that the Spread were going to play a big deal in Roshar. And turns out I was right. They are not just a metaphor for quantum mechanics, but they are a integral part of this plot of, of the story, world building, everything. Uh, but even more than that, Syl is becoming one of my, probably my second favorite character. And it's just so cool to have something that could have been just a, you know, some sort of plot device become a character at the forefront of the story and, and in my opinion one of the things that makes Stormlight very unique. Syl by herself adds so much value to the story and really kind of carries Kaladin uh, through some of his big developmental moments in my opinion. And when we uh, talk about world building it's something I always like to go over whenever I'm reviewing. Uh, you know Way of Kings I thought their world building was pretty pretty good. I thought it was Sanderson's best. And in Words of Radiance, it was weird. Usually in the second book, that's when we kind of open up the map, right? Like Clash of Kings for Song of Ice and Fire, or even a Mistborn, really. I thought Well of Ascension kind of expanded the world. And we do get a little bit of expansion through the interludes, but you know, um, it's like a convergence. It's almost instead of expanding out, we're actually bringing all the characters in, which is weird because it's something that you don't see a lot until the end of a series. Uh, I think Dagger and Coin did this at one point, and Dagger and Coin moved people around pretty fast. Sanderson's not doing that here. You know, I think Shallan pretty much spends the entire time uh, getting to the location. Uh, I'm keeping this spoiler free, so I won't mention any more. But, uh, you know, this is just one of those things where it's different than a lot of the other epic fantasy series where we're bringing everyone together, but it worked. And I thought it got to expand on the Shattered Plains a little bit more. If you weren't the biggest fan of that setting, which I have seen people... Uh, you know, say, I could see that being a negative. For me, it's not. I thought we got a little bit more uh, in-depth history and a little bit more information of the Shattered Plains. And, you know, there are mentions of places uh, uh, elsewhere in the world. And I thought we got a little bit more context of where these people come from. So in that regard, I, I thought the world building was very good. Um, Way of Kings, probably a little better in that regard, but it's the first book in a series. So all of the world building, not just location, obviously, uh, is going to be more at the forefront of a book one. But it continues here in Words of Radiance, and I thought that it was at least at the level of Way of Kings, maybe just a bit below. Now, when it comes to the characters of Words of Radiance, uh, all of them, uh, from you know sub sub characters to our main characters like Kaladin and Shallan and Dalinar, Adolin, all all of these characters uh, are, are all improved in my opinion. So that kind of tells you the level of detail Sanderson's putting in to Stormlight characters. Uh, I do think it's his best character work to date uh, of the things I've read. I've only read Mistborn Era 1 and Warbreaker, but Stormlight, he really, really shines. And if Way of Kings was... Way of Kings was very much a book of many characters, but it was a, the book of Kaladin, in my opinion. Uh, you might disagree, but I also feel like Words of Radiance, then, is very much a book of Shallan. Now, that doesn't mean that we're following her only around or anything like that. Um, but you feel that she gets her moment, her character-defining moments here. Uh, and I'm sure she's going to grow more as the books go. But just really set her center stage. And I, I mean, I'm all, I'm all in. It did it for me. I believe in her as a character. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty invested. I'm pretty invested in Shallan. When it comes to Kaladin, um, so I'm going to say something, and it's going to sound like I'm being a hater, but I'm not. I promise. I love, I love 
the way Kaladin fails. Okay, I love the way that he fails uh, physically sometimes, but uh, more so in his decision making or maybe his thought process. And very much, this is a, a book of Kaladin growing through his failures. And that's what I mean when I say I love the way he fails. It's because Sanderson's writing him in a way where he's not just like this perfect chosen one that has it all figured out. That's not that's not the character that Kaladin is. But what Kaladin reminds me of is a little bit of Tao from Rage of Dragons. If you haven't read that, then you know this this is going to go out the window for you. You should read it. It's really good. I had a review for that as well. Uh, Rage of Dragons, in my opinion, Tal is actually a better character than Kaladin, uh, which might be a controversial statement, but uh, you know I have opinions. I'm going to share them, I guess. Uh, but Kaladin reminds me of Tal because Tal is not a perfect person on his revenge story, and Kaladin is seeking revenge, but I also think he's just seeking like, per you know, like belonging uh and a reason and he has all this perseverance but he's trying to figure out what's right and what's the next step for him and where he fits where does Kaladin fit in roshar i mean where does he fit in this society uh that quite honestly is not fair uh and he's admired by the people high in the caste system but he connects more with the people who are in the bottom and he's kind of in this midway and I just love it. I think he fails a lot in this book in a good way. I think it really pushed Kaladin's character forward, and I think, um, which I say I think a lot, and now I just realized that. Kaladin's character gets very established here. We get to see a lot more inner turmoil, and again, Syl is a driving factor in that, almost like a good angel on the shoulder in a way, and I dig it. I really like it. I think if you were not high on Kaladin in the first book, you're going to see a little bit of the same in the second book, but I think for what Sanderson's offering me him as a character, uh, you, you got to root for the guy. And I'm not, I'm not like, you know, Team Kaladin to the extreme, but Kaladin going for, I, I just love it. I feel like it's a little bit of a slow burn. I feel like we're seeing him in a lot of nefarious positions and decision making, and he's staying true to his character while still growing and finding out more about himself. So Kaladin, I think, will be another polarizing opinion. I think people who didn't enjoy him in the first book might have a chance at enjoying him here, but I could see people uh, being down. But I think let's just uh, go journey before the destination here, folks. And I just need to put this out here for all of you Stormlight fans and everyone watching. Again, thank you. But uh, I'm Team Dalinar, okay? I don't care what happens to anybody else. I love Dalinar. Team Dalinar for life. Put it on, hashtag it, whatever. Also, just want to really quick, uh, I kind of forgot this at the beginning of the video. I wanted to throw a shout out to Alex from Fantasy Book Talks uh, at Fantasy Book Talks on Twitter and Chris Bookish Cauldron. They gave me a shout out in their videos and I've gotten a very large lump sum of um, subscribers who have came to me and said, hey, I'm from these channels. They shouted you out, you know, great content. I want to say thanks for stopping by and thanks for being here. And if you haven't checked out those two guys' channels, if you're not, people who have came over from them, please check them out. I'm going to put them down in the description. And while you're down there, if you haven't and you're a new viewer, go ahead and hit subscribe and like and all that good stuff. So as far as the pacing goes, I think that's the biggest improvement Words of Radiance has over Way of Kings, uh, the Way of Kings, uh, which, you know, like Alex, I just mentioned from Fantasy Book Talks, he, uh, you know, he said, yeah, you know, the pacing was, wasn't there for me. And, uh, you know, I respect that. I, I think I think there are some people that would find the pacing to be a little slow. I am, a, I am an avid book one lover. So I, I give it a little bit more leeway with slower things. Um, the pacing's improved here. Alex, you're going to love it. If you haven't read it already, you're going to love it, man. I, I promise you. And anybody out there that had maybe problems with the pacing uh, in the first one, I think you're going to love it. Uh, I know I did. I will say, and this is probably the only big negative I have from the book, is I felt like the Sander Lanch, which if you don't know what that is, it's just... Sanderson likes to pile it on in the climax. Sometimes he even drags out that middle a little bit, and then it's just this avalanche, which Sander Lanch, right? Uh, um, of just, oh my God, action-packed climax. You know, it feels like the end of a Marvel movie. And it, it, it was here, uh, you know, that's his style. That's gonna happen every single book. But I think it could have been spread out over 50 to 100 pages more. I really felt like the climax, uh, while all the points stuck, and they were, you know, they were great. They were fantastic and they were impactful and they meant a lot to, to the overall story and our characters. I just felt like it was a little snug. Like I felt like it was just a little cramped and I found myself, I mean, kind of reeling like, oh my God. And then we jumped to the next chapter and stuff's happening. You know, like, oh my God, uh, man, I almost feel like it would have benefited uh, the book 
in the pacing of the story if it would have started a little bit earlier. Just my opinion, I might be wrong. I still think this is the best pace I've read in a Sanderson book overall, especially the beginning and the middle. Uh, there are some beats there at the beginning that uh, blew my mind, okay? And uh, I think we're, we're huge to the story. And that kind of brings me to my point. Uh, there are two chapters in this book that I think, like, all right, White Spine Uncaged, I think it is, is the best chapter I have ever read in a fantasy book, I'm pretty sure. Um, the Red Wedding, obviously, is up there from A Song of Ice Fire, but in especially recent memory in this year, I'm telling you, White Spine Uncaged, Bridge Four did a vid video on it. If you haven't checked out Bridge Four, he does a lot of A Song of Ice Fire content, but he's a big Stormlight fan as well. He's excellent, tell him I sent you. Um, he actually did a video where he just reads out this chapter and he kind of puts graphics on the screen of who would play, you know, what roles. If you have it, it, it's spoilers. It's full of spoilers. Okay. I'm not going to mention any here. But if you want to, go check out that video, Bridge 4, White Spy on Cage. Mo fantastic moment. And I agree with him. It's so funny. I read that chapter and he posted the video like the next day. And I agree. I think I think it's the best chapter I've read in fantasy. If it does not get your blood pumping, I think you could probably close up the book. Like, if you don't like it at all, I think you close up the book, Stormlight's not for you, and that's totally fine. Everybody has their, their cup of tea, right? But for me, that is those moments in fantasy, those character-defining moments that uh, people like John Gwynn nail. I mean, Sanderson killed it here. And uh, get your blood pumping. Let's go. You know, I'm stomping my feet, punching the air. My cats are looking at me like I'm insane. Uh, but, man, it got me hype, and it, it really sold me. That, that's probably the, the biggest turning point for me for the Kaladin character. Uh, and I'll leave it at that because I don't want to give any more spoilers. Um, the other chapter that I said there's two is uh, Eshanai or Eshane, I'm not sure how to say it, but, um, you know, is an antagonist, I guess, depending on what I found myself rooting for, but I guess she would be considered a bad guy. She has an interlude, and I'm not going to say it because of spoilers, you'll know which one it is. This epic moment. I mean, just, just this uh, coming to power moment that will stick with me no matter what happens with her character in the future. I want more of her for sure. Um, but that, that moment will stick with me as I read Stormlight over the next, you know, what, two decades maybe. Uh, beautiful. I would love to see uh, people who have read the book. I think you would know what I'm talking about. I would love to see what your opinions are of that character because of all the new people that kind of got introduced, that is number one. I love Stormlight. I'm having a blast. I'm going to be honest. I hate Lyft. Uh, as a character in the interludes. I've actually talked to Patrick, which I mention on here all the time from Patrick Reads, um, who has a booktube channel, by the way. Shout out to Patrick. I'm going to put a link also down to his. This is just a big plug uh, for, for my friends here on booktube. But in all seriousness, he, you know, he doesn't actually love Lyft either. And Edge Dancer, which is the novel I need to read before uh, I get to Oathbringer, is all about Lyft, apparently. And... Uh, I'm going to read it, and I'm going to take it for what it is, but I'm not very pumped up about it. Uh, the character just seems very juvenile, and I get it. That's the point, and not all characters have to be for me, right? So that might be your favorite character, so you don't have to, you don't have to come for me, all right? Uh, we all have our favorite characters. I'm just not too amped up about reading this novel, but I am so excited to read Oathbringer. And uh, I've been chomping at the bit. I just got caught up with all the first laws before Trouble with Peace came out, uh, which I had to read Heroes. Uh, what did I have to read? Heroes, Red Country, Sharp Ends, and A Little Hatred. I read all four of those in about 14 to 15 days. And now I'm reading Trouble with Peace and having a blast. Um, there's actually a poll on my Twitter. And I said, Words of Radiance review or First Law? And Words of Radiance edged it out. So that's why you're getting this review today. Uh, but I am going to start reviewing the First Law. I'm going to do the First Law trilogy uh, and then go through each of the standalones because I have a lot to say about First Law. Joe Abercrombie is my favorite modern fantasy author, and I think he is actually a little... It's weird because he gets mentioned a lot, but I actually think he's kind of underrated for how amazing of a writer he is. But that's a that's for another video. Uh, up next on my TBR, uh, I'm going to finish up Trouble with Peace, do Edge Dancer, do uh, Oathbringer, and then I got a lot of stuff to read. Um, I actually have most of my end of my year planned out, which I don't really do, so maybe I'll make a video about my uh, TBR for the rest of 2020, and then at the end of the year, I'm going to be reviewing and doing a top 10, and uh, Words of Radiance is, <laughs> it's it's going to be in the top 10, probably top 5, probably top 3, might be the best book I've read all year. Um, I have a lot of different feelings about this. Um, I want to say that the conclusion of the book and this kind of mysterious thing that happens and the tie-in with Warbreaker that has occurred. I love the tie-in with Warbreaker, so I'm glad I read it. 
and I can't wait to see where it goes, and I can't wait to hear from you. So get down in the comments, let me know. Words of Radiance, what did you think? I thought it was amazing. Try to keep spoilers for Oathbringer and Edge Dancer out of this if you can. Uh, I just don't want it to get spoiled for me because I am growing an attachment to this series uh, like no other. Um, if you haven't read this book and maybe you didn't like The Way of Kings or maybe you did and you just haven't got to it, I'm telling you, drop everything and read Words of Radiance. It's a six out of five book. I mean, it, it, it's a storm of swords. It's it's up there with the all-time greats, in my opinion, for uh, fantasy novels. And uh, whew, Brandon Sanderson has really won me over. Uh, I'm not a stand for him, but I definitely love what he's doing here in Stormlight. Hey, and if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, that's where I do a lot of my TBR updating and kind of live thoughts as I read books like Stormlight Archive. And I read an array of other fantasy and sci-fi, so make sure to follow me on there. It's at the Flockabelly. It'll be on the screen and down below if you want to do that. And you can add me on Goodreads, even though it's a horrendous site. I want to thank you so much. For tuning into this video and uh, joining me on the Stormlight Archive and putting up with this Cosmere mustache. Um, until next time, make sure you're good, be safe, and always turn the page.